All right, so today I wanna to talk to you about SBA loans and leases. Now, we have seen a bunch of clients make some really terrible mistakes and it, it seems like maybe not that big of a mistake or it seems like you're doing the right thing uh, with your lease and then it turns out to be kind of a, a very critical air in your startup and SBA loan process. So you may know or your SBA lender may have told you uh, in the application process that hey, you're going to need to have a lease that is the same term or has the ability to extend the term of the lease to match the length of the SBA loan. So for example, if you have if you're going to get a SBA loan for a seven year term, you may need a lease or a lease with the ability to extend or renew up to that seven years. And, and the reason why this is important for some businesses, if think about it, if you're a restaurant and customers come to know your location and, and, and you're you know, popular in this particular neighborhood and you, you've built a following in this area, but then your lease expires after three years and you have to go move to a different neighborhood. You can't find another good spot in the same same area and you end up having to move the restaurant and maybe your customer base doesn't follow you. That, that's a risk to the loan, right? So you can understand why the lender would want to make sure that your, your lease maturity kind of matches the loan maturity. Now, if you are just have an office in any random office building, it really doesn't matter where you're located, then this requirement's probably uh, less important in that and the lender can ask for that to be that requirement to be waived or, or not uh, deemed necessary by the SBA. So that is possible. But in situations where um, it is going to be a requirement, this can be a little bit confusing because you might think, oh, I'm going to apply for a loan. Let me go lock down this lease, sign the lease uh, so I can you know, meet the qualifications for this SBA loan. Here's the problem. What if you sign the lease, but you have no ability to actually open the business without the SBA loan. Maybe you need the SBA loan for renovations or equipment or furniture, or, you know, for the business and your lender hasn't approved the loan yet. Now you've committed yourself to this lease. You've signed this lease. It probably came with a personal guarantee. They may go after you if you, if you break the lease, you may be, you know, really on the hook legally for those lease payments. And Oftentimes what we would see is we'd see clients apply for an SBA loan. They've already signed a lease and we're thinking, we're, we're not sure we, we want to approve this loan. And, and if we don't approve it, it might be that nobody else is going to approve it either. And now this client is, is on the hook for this lease. And, you know, what we might have found or what we might have done from the lender's perspective, we might have said, hey, you know, we need to scale this project down. You're looking to go into a, a 10,000 square foot space. We think you should start smaller in a 5,000 square foot space and, you know, or whatever. The lender may, may want to have an opinion or want to work with you on what they're able to approve. And so you really don't want to sign that lease before you have uh, gotten that approval. Now, once you've gotten the approval from the SBA lender, they may require you to to actually sign on the lease before the loan closes or it kind of can all happen at the same time. But what you really want to avoid is signing that lease before you know for certain that that loan is approved and is going to close. Uh, so I've seen this end in tears way too many times and so wanted to, to share that with you all today. If you have any questions about SBA loans or leases in relation to an SBA loan, uh, feel free to reach out or leave us a comment in the comment section of the video below. Thanks.